Hello, it's me, it's Annie, hi. Um, so, also ignore that. Um, for some reason, none of my pictures will stay on my wall. And um, it's very sad. And whatever I do, they just fall right back off. So, uh, wow, let me paint you a picture. It is a little bit past midnight, like just a touch past midnight. Um, and I am in the trenches of just end of term things. I have two essays due on Thursday, although I got an extension for one. So really just one due on Thursday, but I'm basically starting it tomorrow, which will be Sunday. But anyway, all that's besides the point. Basically, I've been barely reading it all for fun, except for audiobooks. Now, I'm going back to California um, in a week. And then I'll have a lot more time to physically read, obviously, because I'll be on winter break. I'm going to be there for like a month. It's going to be great. But um, I figured because I feel like I've been putting out no videos and I want to put out videos because I like I like it um, and I want to read more. I thought I'd just do for you guys a little weekly reading vlog. And that's that. Um, so right now. I am reading Love Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood on audio, and um, I'm enjoying it. I don't know why. Ali Hazelwood was someone I kind of judged um, when her books first came out. So she put out this book called The Love Hypothesis. You might have heard of it. Um, and it was Kylo Ren and Kylo Ren and Ray fan fiction which I'm not a big Star Wars fan, um, but it was like that he was her, like a professor and she was a grad student and he wasn't her professor, so it was like fine. Um, but she has this thing about really, really tall men and really, really short women. And as a relatively short woman, I actually don't have a thing for super, super tall men because I don't want to feel like I can be thrown around Anyway, um, wow, that got really off track, but she, I judged her, and I thought, no way, I'm not gonna read one of her books, and then Katie Colson read Love Theoretically, which is, like, the newest one, and loved it, and I was like, if Katie likes it, I might give it a try, so I've had it on hold on Libby, for like ages and on, on Libby you can um when you when a hole comes through you can be like no nah, no nah, I don't want it now give it to me in however many days and I've kept pushing it and eventually I was like I might as well just listen to like the first hour and see what I think and it's very it's cute and I really like it I'm with about I think like 60% of the way through it and I started it yesterday um so at least I can read audiobooks quickly. The thing I understand about Ellie Hazelwood is that she's writing these same books but in different fonts but if that's the case I'm really liking this font. She's got the kind of she's got this hmm. if you read Abby Jimenez she, she has that same sort of writing where it's like very goofy banter and I, it's doing it for me. So this book ow Okay, this book is about this girl. What's her name? Her name is Elsie. And Elsie, bless her, she's going through it. She is an adjunct professor, um, which is basically the worst. An adjunct professor basically, to my understanding, goes and teaches at different unis um, and is not necessarily paid a great wage so she's doing that but she's also her side hustle is to be a fake dater so she's fake dating this guy this guy has a brother who she who annoys her okay because she is you know it's this very typical rom-com thing where the girl main character like okay let me show you she she'll meet this guy 
And she's like, wow, he's so annoying. But he's devilishly handsome, though. She'll either ignore the fact that she's attracted to him until he gets more charming. And then it kind of comes back into play. My phone said it's out of storage, so this might stop recording soon because I can't, can't figure out why. Anyway, so this girl, she's like, I forget what she was saying, but basically it's really weird. Like the main character in any sort of romance book will kind of forget that she's attracted to this main guy or like she'll really act like, ew, I can't believe like you would ever suggest that we would date, oh my God. And it gets really annoying to me, but whatever. We suspend our disbelief. And, you know, she thinks this guy that is the brother of the guy that she's fake dating is really annoying. And then she has this really important job interview at MIT um, as a tenured professor, which could, you know, help her with a bunch of things because she's also dealing with having type 1 diabetes and having no, like her job doesn't cover her health care. So she is really struggling to pay for all these insulin things that she needs and um she finds out that not only is the brother of the guy she's fake dating um a member of this kind of review board that's gonna see if she can get hired at this job he also wrote a paper that basically invalidated her whole study which is theoretical physics um and also got her mentor fired from a very prestigious journal. So he is like properly, like that is very, very solid, I would say, academic rival um, terror. Oh my God. It's saying I still have 15 gigabytes of data left, but apparently, um, it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, Tate's cutting me off, but I'm really liking it. Um, this man is very, he's very cute. Now I will give it to him. He is, he's gargantuan. He's like a giant. Um, but I won't hold that against him. You know, once I actually told a guy on a date that he was too tall, to be fair, he had asked for pros and cons, so it was kind of like I was just telling him what I thought, and he got really angry at me. Anyway, back to the book. Really cute stuff. Really liking it. Um, Yeah, it's a good time. I'm liking it. Very quick read. Kind of fun. Kind of really fun. So I like it. So in other news, you might ask, um, what am I going to be reading physically? And... um. I finished my, my book really late last night and um, I thought, you know, I'm just going to pile up just a, a book or two to um, that could be in the running for my next read. And um, okay, I'm literally going to go insane. I'm going to go insane. Um, my phone keeps telling me the storage is full when um, I have literally like 15 gigabytes of storage left. Anyway, these are all the books I thought of. So I'm going to take you through them. Um, and I think I'll probably decide which one I'm going to read. But like, am I sure? So first off, I was thinking, I'm kind of in, a, I really want to read an epic fantasy. And I've been in that mood because I have to read like literary novels for school. So at first I thought, of course at the bottom of the pile, The Will of Ascension, Mistborn, book two by Brandon Sanderson. Then I thought, I feel a little bit slumpy after it took me a month to finish a book that I was reading physically. Um, and so I thought, what better than my favorite series to kind of keep me going. And this could be a very quick read. Um, a Treacherous Curse by Deanna Rayborn. This is number three in the Veronica Speedwell series. And this is what I think I'm going to go with, actually, because it'll be like a nice palate cleanser. But at the same time, I am wanting fantasy. So I'm, I'm a bit confused. Um, then I thought... This has been on my book, been on my book, been on my shelf for ages. It's a bit chunky, but I've heard really good things. I actually saw it on Goodreads today. This has a 4.31 and like 28,000 ratings. Like, that's insane. Um, this is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by S.A. Chakraborty. 
um, Spotamami Pirate. And that could be fun. Then we have Trust of the Animal Sea, another book I've had. Well, this I've had since summer. And I basically, it's like The Princess Bride, which I love. Also want to read it, and my sister's reading it. So if I read this, I could talk about it with my sister when I'm home. But I think I'm going to read it. I'm going to bring it home regardless of whether I'm reading it next. Then I don't want to like pile these in front of my face. There's so much happening. Anyway, 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awad. Now I've had this video idea for a while. Let me know if you want to see it. Where I read all of Mona Awad's books in order of publication date. Actually, I'm going to do it whether you want to or not. But let me know if you do. Um, this is the first one, and I'm going to bring this home for the holidays, too. I don't think I'm going to read it right now, but I'm going to bring it home. And then I thought maybe I could read Piranese, which I feel like I'm going to eat up as soon as I start reading it. But for now, I'm just going to put it to the side and not begin to read it. So I think for me, it's actually just between these two. Um, and I think I'm... Gone with the Treacherous Curse because I don't know. I mean, honestly, so while I was, I tried to restart my phone to see if that would kind of help with the whole phone storage weirdness. Um, and I just read like the first, the first page, and it already made me kind of a giggle. Like the first sentence says. I assure you, I'm perfectly capable of identifying a phallus when I see one. <laughs> Isn't that great? Like, sometimes you just need a little bit of fun with our little duo, Veronica and Stoker. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, this is a series about this girl, woman, a young woman named Veronica Speedwell. And she's a lepidopterist, which means that she collects butterflies and she lives in London in the 1800s and she was raised as an orphan by her two by her aunts and um they pass away kind of in the beginning of the first book but she's like she's all right she's gonna go on an expedition now she's kind of free to travel the world and like do butterfly hunting expeditions um and she's on her way to do that when actually after her aunt's funeral she finds that her home has been broken into. She um, apprehends the person stealing from her home. And um, that person then tries to kidnap her. And then she's saved by this baron that comes and is like, haha, not today. And then he tells Veronica, your life is in grave danger. Come with me. Um, I'm going to London. And she was like, perfect. I need to get to London to get wherever I'm going next anyway. So I'll just use you like as my Uber, basically. She doesn't really think anything of the fact that he said her life's in danger because she's sort of like, I'm a nobody. Like, why would my life be in danger? It doesn't matter. Um, so they get to London. He drops her off with his friend Stoker, um, who is a taxidermist and natural historian and was like a surgeon in the Navy. Like he's a man of many trades, this guy. He's great. And he's a little bit grumpy. Um, and we love him. But the Baron's like, here, stay with my friend Stoker. I'm just going to be back in the morning or something. And he's never back because he dies. And Stoker gets blamed for his murder. So in the first book, they set out to kind of prove Stoker's innocence. And also figure out maybe why Veronica's life might be in danger. And a mystery about her past. But yeah, so then the books kind of just continue and they're like this little mystery um, solving duo. And it's just the best. Like the humor is amazing. The writing is stunning. The characters are um, like my real life friends and there's nothing not to love. So uh, this is gonna be what I read um, and I'll update you tomorrow. Fair warning. In the next week, when I'm doing this vlog, I am also dying from having to write my essays. So, um, we'll see. This will probably be a bit of therapy reading late at night, like it is now, when I should be going to bed. But I'm actually putting off tomorrow because I don't want it to get here and I have to start my essay. 
Um, but yeah, welcome to my weekly vlog. Um, I might make this a thing because I miss you guys. Kisses. Um, I will update you guys tomorrow. Hello. Um, it's the next day. I've changed my filming location, but honestly, I kind of hate this. But I just don't want to be always coming at you from the same place, even though it's objectively the best place to film. What if I, like, perhaps there? You know what? It's still really not doing much for me, but this is what you're getting. But yeah, I had a long <sighs> day of doing my work at the library. I'm actually a lot less stressed than I was yesterday. Yesterday I was really stressed because I have this essay due on Thursday and then I realized like that's four whole days to do it, including today. Um, and I finished like all the planning and stuff today. So now I just have to write it. And that's actually super easy and I feel like I can get that done by Tuesday night um, if I stick with my plan. So that's good. But anyway, I was just at the library, as you have seen, and I am updating you because I just finished Love Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood, and I really liked it. I think if I had to rate it, I think... I'm thinking of 4.5. Like, I feel really happy with it. I'm really glad that it didn't go too crazy, like, in one sense. Yeah, the main character, like, the couple was moving quite quickly in the sense of, like, they were already, like, shall we move in together? I love you. All this stuff. But I'm kind of, like, he's so sweet. I'm kind of willing to believe it. What did I just... <laughs> kind of looked like I picked my nose there. Um, Because I would move in with that man, like, ASAP. Uh, but overall, just, it was really cute and sweet. And, like, the conflict at the end... I think made sense, you know, the classic third act conflict. I think it, yeah, I think it made sense. It checked out and I liked the way that everything was resolved. And it just made me feel kind of like cute and cozy and happy and very single, like really single. Um, so that was fun. And next on audio, I think I'm going to do um, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, let me see, I believe that's her name, um, I read Station Eleven by that author, and I liked it, I also read that on audio, and I have a feeling that I should be reading her books physically, I think I'd probably enjoy them more that way, but who knows, because I haven't even started this audiobook yet, um, so we'll see, if I'm not really, like, feeling it, I don't know why I wouldn't, first of all, I'm expecting to like it because everyone likes this. Yeah, if I decide that I'd rather be reading it physically, then I'll probably DNF, but it's, the audiobook is six hours. Like I could do that all tonight or I'll probably have it finished by tomorrow. Oh, and other news, one second. Last night I started A Treacherous Curse and it's so good. If this was the right call, I got 41 pages in and I just did not want to stop reading but it was actually 1 30 in the morning and um I had to force myself to go to sleep but this is just yeah it, these books like make me so happy I don't know why I'm tearing up so good I just these characters are like it's like a little warm hug of a book um there's also murder but i think this one is going to be some of the stuff that's happening has to do with something happening in egypt but i don't think that they're going to go to egypt at least i don't think so um and we're getting some insight into stoker's past which is really interesting but i'm just really excited to learn a bit more about stoker and see like him and veronica are funny like it's this whole will they won't they thing and I'm excited to see um, how things progress in this book between the two of them romantically. Like, it's not all about the romance, but it's also like, come on, they're besties, but like, they're going to be together and I can feel it. 
Um, but yeah, this is giving me all of the best vibes and it's just so much fun. And I think I am really trying to just leave my work where I left it at the library today. I have, I mean, what time? Is, I think it's like maybe 7.30 right now. That means I have four and a half hours to um, read and edit a vlog. And also I'm gonna do some yoga now and make some dinner and probably make some soup. But anyway, lots of time to potentially read. And if I can finish this before Saturday when I have to leave to go back to America, that would be amazing. And I think I can do it, you know? Um, so yeah, very exciting. I've also decided that I am eventually going to annotate all of my books of this. I don't really ever feel the need to annotate. Like usually I'll just underline kind of. I guess that is annotating. Sometimes I'll like write in the margins and stuff. But um, I wanna like color code annotate this series. Um, because it just makes me so happy. And yeah, I'll have you guys back up probably tomorrow. Okay, hello. Um, it's the next day. I'm really only filming this because it's light out. Like, have you, this is crazy because I never film when it's light out. Why am I crying? <sighs> what are you start crying? And I'm wearing actual clothes and I put on makeup. I mean, yes, it is like 1.30 and I haven't really done anything. Um, let me paint you a picture. So last night I was going to go straight to reading Treacherous Curse, but um, I ended up watching YouTube for like an hour and a half. And then I went, I read 20 pages of a Treacherous Curse and then I had to go to bed because it was like two in the morning. Um, but yeah, today I was like, I woke up, I was super groggy because I was up till 2 a.m. Um, I did an everything shower, I did some yoga, I um, did my makeup, and like, no, I haven't had breakfast, um, there is no breakfast food in my house, so that's fine. So anyway, we're gonna go out, I'm gonna go to the pharmacy to pick up some prescriptions, then I'm gonna go to Cafe Nero, do some work, um, I have to go to Sainsbury's and Boots as well, just kind of do some errands. Um, but yeah, tonight I'm actually meeting a friend for drinks and then we're gonna go see like this showcase of plays that we have lots of friends in because I do drama. So that's gonna be fun. Um, so yeah, I'm actually doing things today. Instead of just going to the library and that's fun. And yes, it is a late start to the day. Um, but this is kind of the norm for me right now, and I need to change that, but, you know, at least I'm, like, doing yoga. Hi, I am now home from the cafe. Wow, the debate of the day has been, do I, like, straighten this to make it actually make sense? Or do I just leave it? And I'm kind of convinced that maybe I should leave it. It's so unexpected, it's so out of the blue, and my hair lately is just kind of a nest. Um... And I like it. Anyway, not what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I did so well. I wrote the f intro paragraph and the first body paragraph to my essay, which is what I wanted to do today. Oh my God. I was eating bread and I got flour on me. Um, so that's what I wanted to do today. And I did it. I'm doing no more than what I have to do. And you know what? It's so fun. It's so fun. Um, but I got a little, what? stop it. Stop it. I um, have a little fun surprise while I was at Nero because I found out that I have a skip the line loan on Libby for The Woman and Me by Britney Spears. I'm literally so excited. I've been waiting to read this book as I'm sure everyone is. Or you maybe have read it because it's been out for what, like a month, a month and a half. Um, but I'm so excited about it. I'm gonna read it while I'm like walking to drinks with my friend and probably walking home from the showcase tonight and I'm really excited I'm so excited like I I think like I watched Murphy Napier's video about it and she was very honest she was like I'm not like big into Britney and I'm like not massively big in Britney but like I do like her 
and she is an icon um and she was saying it's not like the best written which you can kind of expect from celebrity memoirs but that it kind of goes in deep and is very like insightful and i like that so i'm excited and i also heard really good things about the audiobook i forget who it's narrated by but they're also like an icon um so yeah <sighs> excited overall for that um and i will update you guys either later tonight or tomorrow i do plan on like getting home and doing some reading after the showcase tonight hey so um i i'm back wearing the same sweater it is again after midnight and my hair is crazy once again also oh my god try these noodles like the stir fry ones they're amazing. I am hungry, so I made some. I just put in, so basically you get four different things with it. I mean, you get the noodles and then you get a, um, it's like an oil and spice pack. And then there's like a soy sauce reduction kind of thing. So I added those in. And then you get chili and bamboo sauce. Um, hopefully I said that right. It's amazing. But I... Let me tell you something. I the reason I'm back um, is because I have been building my like Christmas wish list. I saw a TikTok um, from oh my god, what's her name? She's amazing. I think Lexi Newly Nova on TikTok, and I think she has YouTube now. But um, she was like, you know, it's a great idea. Is like maybe get someone a sweater like one of those bookish crew necks um and i went to this site and i really want a crew neck from them but i was they're like they do drops so they won't have more out till next year so then i was like i went on etsy because i was like oh i bet you can find something for that on etsy um i, I did find some cute ones <laughs> So then I started just, I just was like, oh, let's look at like bookish gifts on Etsy. <laughs> let me what I tell you. What? Let me tell you what I found. Look how fun this is. I want this for Christmas. I put it on, I have my Google Doc and I went all the way up to the top and I went in all caps. This is amazing. I would want the adult fantasy option. Um, it is a blind, a personalized blind date with a book box gift. Really cute. Um, and it's so cheap. It's like $31 starting. I'd probably just do like the chillest one. You can choose your genre from like young adult. There's like middle grade, anything. You can choose like a queer one. They give you a brand new book. For their most basic one, they give you a drink bag that has hot chocolate and tea in it. Um, a bag of sea salt caramels, which, ugh, I am a whore for a sea salt caramel. Um, a one book review bookmark. A, no, a book review bookmark. So you can like write on there. Um, stickers from their collection. A pair of thick and waffle cozy socks. And a greeting card, which you can like personalize the message on. I was like, oh my God. I don't have a boyfriend, so I need my family to buy these things for me. Okay, I'm gonna give you just because I thought of it, you know, I'll give you some other things I've been wanting for Christmas. I'm also gonna eat this, these noodles. I want a new perfume, but it's just a refill of my old perfume. I am the biggest repeat buyer. I have this necklace that I wear like every day. I, this is the third one of it. And it's the same exact necklace. Like I am a creature of habit. I'm very much almost out. But um, it is the Valentino Born in Roma Yellow Dream Eau de Parfum. Oh my god, let me see what the notes are. I'll tell you the notes. Oh, it's so good. Like, everyone loves the way that this smells. Wow. Um, okay, key notes. Peony Accord, Turkish Rose, and Musk. It just smells like heaven. I don't know what to tell you. It's so good. I'm almost out, so I was like, buy me more because, you know... It's not cheap. Um, also, sorry, <clears throat> you know, still recovering from sickness. As for Doc Martens, because I've never had any. I also want 
the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Lip Bath in Peachy Plump. Now I have this lip gloss. My parents got it for me for my birthday a while ago and it's so good. I get compliments on it every time I wear it. It is relatively long lasting, I'd say, and it's like kind of shimmery and it just, it's beautiful. I really want some loafers. I really love these ones from Coach, but that's like a reach. Like I'll just settle for a black loafer. A platform would be preferable. In terms of books, <laughs> okay, my book wish list. I actually narrowed this down a lot. The Will of the Many by James Islington or Islington. I don't really know how to say it. Um, I'm not going to go into what these are about just for the sake of time. This one is sort of Roman inspired and it's like a school setting. It's the beginning of a new series. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. And I'm really, I think it would be really exciting to be starting a series and having to anticipate books. Like it's kind of sucks, but it's kind of really fun. Um, so I really want that. Bookshops and Bonus by Travis Baldry. This is more out of nostalgia than for anything. Because I really liked um, Legends and Lattes, but I do realize like the characters are kind of just one note and they kind of just like have their sticks and they don't really have much personality. And I would agree. Um, well, but I will say it was like a very cozy kind of light, like heartwarming read. And Bookshops and Don Bonus, like I read Legends and Lattes last Christmas. This just feels like I want to read it. And it's set in a bookshop. Um, then I want The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. These are the second the second and third book in the fifth season trilogy. I read the fifth season late last year. Again, around like December, last year, January this year. Loved it. I just got it from Waterstones a couple weeks ago. And I'm going to reread it because I think it deserves a reread. I loved it. But I want to reread it and then like read that whole trilogy kind of next year. Um, I also want Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. Now I haven't read Rebecca, really want to, um, but Frenchman's Creek I've heard is like for Daphne du Maurier fans, it's a big deal. And um, it's it involves pirates and you know how I feel about pirates. Penance by Eliza Clark. This is Eliza Clark's second book that she's released. The first was Boy Parts, which I read maybe a month and a half ago, and I just devoured it. It was so good and really crazy. This one's very different. It's kind of like a, it's like a, like a true crime thing, but the crime is actually fictional, but it's like told like a true crime thing. I don't know. It sounds really good. I also want a box set of the Red Rising trilogy. I really want to read more fantasy next year. Um, because I always feel like I'm wanting to read fantasy and then I don't read fantasy and I'm like, why not? Um, I read Red Rising years ago, like when I was in middle school and I loved it. I don't think I ever continued on with the series and I want to reread it and like be part of this hype that's going on. Lastly, Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I'm not asking for the whole trilogy because I really only have enough space in my suitcase to bring enough like a limited amount of stuff back to the UK with me. So I, I wish I could ask for like a bunch of books at Christmas, but I can't. Um, but I really want to start the whole um, Realm of the Elderlings deal next year. Oh my God. Hi, what I was going to talk to you about is that I did start The Woman in Me. I am, um, I would check how far in I am, but I'm filming this on my phone and I'm reading it on my phone. The audiobook is really short. It's maybe five five and a half hours um sorry about that noise um and I reckon I'm about an hour in maybe an hour and a half yeah the writing's not the best I think especially in the beginning I was kind of feeling like you know when you're like a kid and you write an essay I don't know you're writing like a like a story in school your story is something like this let's say um so it's something that happened to, to me um, and I'm like, my mother gave us a trampoline when we were kids. We loved that trampoline. We jumped on it. And one day the trampoline broke in the bottom. Like it's kind of just like, it's sort of like that, like very like simple sentences. But what I will say is that the emotion of what she's saying, I think, can come through really well. Um, 
<clears throat> Michelle Williams, that is who's reading it. Um, she is doing a really good job. And yeah, so it's kind of going chronologically from Britney's childhood to, you know, where she is today, I would presume. Um, right now we are at the point of her breakup with Justin Timberlake. You know, he broke up with her over text. Like that is messed up. They were dating for ages. They lived together. Um, they also knew each other since they were kids. Um, yeah, so her childhood was really rough. She had some really rough things happen to her. Um, I wouldn't say a normal upbringing by any means. Um, she started, like, showbiz when she was quite young. Um, she was, I would say, taken advantage of by a man when she was quite young. She had an intimate encounter with someone um, when she was underage and they were of age. Um, and I, I think sometimes it's really interesting to see the things that she's going into more detail about and the things that she's not. She didn't go into any detail about that, really. She was just like, this is what happened. And then we just kind of left it. And um, I would have preferred a bit of like, let's unpack that for a minute. <laughs> That's not, this felt like a drive-by shooting. I was like, oh God, okay, that happened. Okay, yeah, no. And then, and then you got your first boyfriend. Like, what? What? Um, yeah, so I don't know. I kind of feel like, I'm gonna say it feels really brief. And there are some places so far where I'm wishing that we went into more depth. Um, putting the writing style aside, like I, I, I want to hear the story that she's giving, um, but I do want some more depth in places. And maybe she's not ready to go into depth on things, but I don't know. It feels, it all feels a little bit rushed. Um, so that's what we're feeling so far. At some point, I am actually going to read more of a treacherous curse tonight because I'm so excited to do that. Oh, and also, if you wanted to know, I did. I have a, I had a really good time at the show. My friends did a really good job. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Hi, it's me. Um, what a day. What a day. Um, today I had a really... My depression was really acting up. Um, I think part of it has to do with the fact that I woke up feeling more sick again. I had like a sore throat. I think it's just because I was a little bit over ambitious. Like I didn't really drink much last night. I just had a cider, but like it's something about like going out at night and like the walking in the cold. I don't know. I don't know. Something happened and it um triggered my sickness. And I I also woke up just exhausted cuz I woke up at I mean, I even woke up at 10 and I went to bed at 3, which is not that bad, but I just think my body is like still a little bit ill and trying to recover. So I did not have the most um, productive day. What I wanted to do was finish my essay today and then just edit tomorrow and submit tomorrow and then like not even have to worry about submitting on Thursday. Um, I did write a bit. I'm not like the most happy with it. I think I realize, I don't know why I'm talking about this. Anyway, it, that's boring. I, I did write a little bit um, and I met with like two of my seminar tutors. So that was good. But other than that, I really just slept and then I made soup and I watched How's Moving Castle, which it was my first time watching it. I don't know why I haven't watched it before, um, but it was so good. Some things about it like kind of confused me. Like I kind of wish I'd watched it with someone that could have explained some, th some stuff to me. Oh, my screen must be greasy. This is kind of kind of sick though. Wow. Um, anyway, uh... Yeah, and then the other thing was just I wish that there had been more of like a romantic kind of plot line between Sophie and Howell. Like, I get it. It's like for kids, but it was like they have almost no interactions. And then she's like, I love you. And I I just, that's like a pet peeve of mine. But um, I can see why Hal, I'm assuming Hal is like everyone's crush. Because with Christian Bale's voice, and the things he says, it's like, it's giving crush. Um, but yeah, I did actually really enjoy it. And I kind of just 
didn't want it to end. It was very, very cute. But now, I mean, what is it? It's like 11 and I want to update you guys on what I've been reading. So I am halfway through, yeah, 50% of the way through The Woman and Me. And I am, I'm enjoying it. I like watched some of her music videos and stuff today. Like it's kind of like a little walk down memory lane. Um, and I like that. I do still wish that she was going a bit more in depth on things. I'm assuming that she's going to go really hard into her conservatorship because I think that we're almost getting to that point, but we haven't gotten there yet. And I'm thinking if there's half the book left, like the conservatorship is going to take up a lot of that. But I kind of wish that there was just more. Give me more. Give me, give me more, Brittany. Um, but yeah, that's really my only gripe with it. Like, I want more. I want more detail. But the writing style, what I, I was complaining about it a little bit earlier. And it's still, like, nothing great. But what it is, is, like, really easy to read. Um, which I kind of like. It just sort of feels like someone talking. Um, so, yeah, I am enjoying it. I just wish that there was more going on. And then last night, I stayed up way too late reading A Treacherous Curse. Ooh. <laughs> Why is everything glowing? Wow. Um, also, side note, this copy, like there's other covers. I'll put one here. Um, and I have the first three in these covers. And then after that, these covers don't exist. So I'm going to buy, I'm going to get rid of all three of my copies like the, of the first three. And then I'm going to buy the new ones. Because also, this book is kind of pissing me off. Um, I got it on World of Books or maybe A Books online, which is really good because it's like really cheap ways to get books. Used to belong to a library. Again, don't like mind that sort of stuff. It has a little mystery thing on here. But what I don't like about this book is... Let me see if I can find it. Actually, you probably wouldn't... Here we, actually, here we go. So if you can see there, that is a bunch of different words but there's like no space between them and that happens a lot in this book um like you know when you're doing spacing for something and you need it all to line up on the end it's like there's no space between these words and i'm sure that there's an addition probably the newer printed one that doesn't do that because it is really annoying and it just makes me feel like the book was badly printed so that's kind of a tangent but I am loving it. I'm like really into this one. Um, I mean, I'm into all of them. I really couldn't like pick a favorite so far. Yeah, really interesting to get to know a bit more about Stoker. The relationship between Stoker and Veronica is just so interesting and good. And like, I just, there's some moments that are really sweet. Like, let me see, actually, I did. Uh, okay, so she kind of like, Veronica has like an approach to how she kind of handles Stoker. Um, and she knows him and she knows how to get sort of responses she wants out of him and stuff, um, which is funny to read about. But in this case, I actually just, this is the end of the chapter I just read. He kind of realizes that she hasn't really asked him much about one aspect of his past that plays a very big role in this novel um and i just want to read you what it says so he says like you haven't asked about this thing and then she says i shall not i promised him when you want to tell me you will still he did not look at me but he reached out and brushed a fingertip over my hand it was a tiny thing that gesture but the whole world was contained within it gratitude partnership understanding i had taken lovers around the world more than a score of them at last count but Stoker was the nearest thing I had ever known to an actual partner. And I knew better than to ask him for what he could not give. Oh! That almost made me sob. Like, I, the, the slow burn, the build, everything is amazing about these two. Deanna Rayborn's characters are brilliant. And also the side characters. Like, every side character feels um complex and definitely really interesting she has some massive characters that she kind of includes in this world um but they don't always act as you'd expect them to act they don't they're not like kind of cornered into little like shticks um 
or just like, you know, char side characters that just have that one personality trait. And I really, really like it. I probably won't say much more to you about it um, until I finish it, just because it's hard to talk about a book that's the third in the series. But yeah, this vlog is getting stupid long. Um, let me know in the comments if you want long vlogs like this or if I should just kind of um, stick to maybe vlogging the experience of reading like one book and make it a little bit less chatty because I'm just kind of in the mood to film this week so I've just been going crazy um yeah I will update you guys tomorrow hi it is the next day and my essay is due tomorrow have I worked on it yet today no is it almost 4 p.m yes um, but it's okay. I went to coffee with a friend. That was good. Um, and I wanted to update you guys real quick because I am a bit further into The Woman in Me. I'm on page, like, I think I'm like 65% now. Um, so not much further than when I updated you last. But I do have some more thoughts. I was reading an article about it, like a review. And I wish I could remember what it was because I would link it below. But basically, it was saying that Brittany seems more interested in um, kind of her relationships, like with Justin Timberlake and with, um, oh, what's his name? Something feder federal? Um, Kevin. Kevin. Um, and like her being a mother and her time with the conservatorship. Then she does with moments that are more to do with her fame such as like um, a VMA's performance or her Rolling Stone cover that was really iconic um, and stuff like that um, which I do think is a fair assessment like in the book she kind of like glides over those things but then and a lot of things to do with her childhood that like I think could be explored more like I might have said earlier um, but then she'll really go in on like how much she loves being a mother and um, her relationship with Justin and her relationship with her first husband and stuff like that, which I do find really interesting. And it does kind of show what she values, which I do appreciate. Like I think for her, she's more interested in being seen as a person than as a celebrity, um, which I do think it makes sense. And it is kind of like good for her but at the same time, and maybe this sounds insensitive, I think that being a celebrity writing a memoir, you do kind of like, you should maybe go into some career defining moments or even talk more about um, her craft. Like she loves being a musician. She loves dancing. She loves that. And she makes that very clear in the novel. But I think even going in more depth on like the recording of, for instance, her favorite album of hers, which is Blackout, like she kind of talks about it a little bit, but only in relation to how the paparazzi were always around and she could only record for like 30 minutes at a time. Um, and I would love a bit, a bit more. However, the stuff with her conservatorship is starting in the novel and it, in, not the novel, in this memoir and it is terrifying. She um she mentions that she has fears that her family's gonna kill her. Um, her dad fully takes over her life. Her mother is complicit in this. Like it is just it's like a real life horror story. Um, and I just think like I will never know, and we can never really know how it feels to be Brittany and have her I entire kind of identity stolen from her and have her life so controlled to like this is what you can eat this is who you can talk to if she wanted to date someone before her first date with them that guy would receive all her medical information and her sexual history like absurd things it's crazy to read about um and i am interested in listening to more of her insight on that um so yeah that is the woman in me i am i am i would still say that i'm enjoying it um 
and wish me luck because I I do have to write this essay today. I do. Okay, hi, it's um, approximately 8.05 p.m., 8.06 at the sound of the tone. <sighs> My dad loves to do that. Anyway, um, I <laughs> have mm, still about half of my essay to write. It's due tomorrow at noon, and we all know I'm not getting up on time for that. And it is on this book, which I love. I love it. Um, but I would like to cry. I'm writing, like, I can't even just keep my outline online. I'm, like, replotting things. And, like, I'm making a diagram. <laughs> this is not really a diagram. It's just, like, me close reading and then trying to draw arrows to connect things. Like, I am going insane. So I am going to go to the library um, with its bright lights and its kind of soul-sucking energy. And I'm going to sit there until this essay is done. And I'm going to submit it tonight. And that is the end of that. Um, and an update on the woman and me because I have no time to read Veronica Speedwell when I have to absolutely grind out this essay. This part is giving what I want the whole book to be giving. This part about the conservatorship, it's so emotional, it's so sad, it's so um, inspiring, but also like you really feel for her. Her father bugged her house. Like there's stuff I didn't know, but a lot of people knew this stuff. Maybe, but I didn't know. So it is riveting. I really just wanted to check in with you guys because, you know, I live alone and sometimes I just need someone to talk to. Um... Walk out the door, you see someone that you know and they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So wish me luck on my essay yet again. And when I check in with you next, I will be done with it. Thank God. And then time to start another one tomorrow. Life is so fun. Okay. Toodles. Goodbye. Ow. Goodbye. Hello. Um, it is the next day. Guess who finished her essay? Um, I submitted it at one in the morning and then I left the library. Um, it's the next day, obviously. And you know, it's already dark out, it's four, and I woke up at about noon, I filmed a video, I now have to start working on my other essay, and I really want to go to Waterstones to work on it, but Waterstones closes at six, um, which is a bummer, but I think I'm just gonna have to go anyway, like, there's no way I'm just staying home all day, and I really don't want to go back to the library, it's just a shame because it takes me, like, half an hour to get to Waterstones. So, gonna leave ASAP. Probably won't buy a book there. Unless. Might buy a book there. But I'm, I'm only, I have a couple ones in mind that I really want. I'm not asking for four for Christmas. And I can't really get any other way. Is my plan. Um, so, I'm gonna run and go do that. And I'll update you guys on my reading later, but I'm almost done with The Woman and Me. I'll give you a full update on my reading later, but I'm almost done with The Woman and Me. Um, like less than an hour left on the audiobook, so I will be finishing that today. And I'm now halfway through A Treacherous Curse. So, okay, I will see you later. I really should go. I should go. Hello, question, do you think I have pink eye? I can't tell. <laughs> I think I have pink eye. That's not fun, but it's fine. I don't really like feel weird or anything. Um. Anyway, more important things. I went to Waterstones and good news, it was open until eight and unfortunately couldn't do any work regarding my next essay that I have to be working on, but I did buy a book. I started specifically looking for standalone fantasy books because I didn't want to buy a whole series. Um, and I bought <laughs> The Monstrosity. That is 
The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is massive. It's very big. But I did read the first chapter while I was sitting there. And I could not be more excited to read this. Like, I kind of just want to keep reading it now. But I can't because I have to go back to the U.S. And there is no way that I'm taking this with me. It's too big and it's too heavy. So that's really sad. But I bought it. And I will be reading it soon. Let me know if you want a reading blog. Like, look, it just stands. It just stands. Because it's that big. Like, this would not do that. <laughs> anyway. Um, halfway through this. Loving it. Don't really know. Don't really think I'm going to tell you anything about it. Um, other than the fact that I remain having the best time reading this. In other news, I did finish The Woman and Me. Putting my criticisms on it aside, um, you guys know my criticisms on this book by now. I thought that the ending and the way that things wrapped up was really nice. You can tell Brittany is incredibly grateful for and feels a very personal relationship to her fans which I really think came through very well. Um, obviously her fans are a big part of the reason why she was freed from the conservatorship so that's insane but yeah I mean she just loves being a mother and she did circle back to kind of her love of music and finding herself again and it was nice because the end of the book was sort of a beginning because she's kind of restarting her life after the conservatorship has ended. Um, all in all, a really, really nice memoir. I think I would give it three out of five stars, um, although it doesn't, I'm not always sure how I feel about rating memoirs, but that's what I would give it. Um, I did really enjoy my time reading this audiobook. I have since started S Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, and I think I'm probably like 10% of the way through, don't really know. Um, I don't know what I'm thinking about it yet. All that's happened is we have this character named Edwin, and I think it's in the 1800s, England. He comes from this kind of like wealthy family, maybe like nobility, I'm not sure. He's been sort of exiled, but now that he's exiled, he's sort of purposeless. Like he just, he tries drawing because he's like, oh, I love looking at these beautiful flowers that I buy for myself every week. Maybe I should draw them and stuff like that. But what I found really interesting is that he, we just found out the reason why he was exiled. And I don't think this is a spoiler because it's happening so early on, but he basically talks about how colonialism is bad at this like family dinner. Obviously this is like when colonialism is happening. I mean, it's still happening, but you know, he's specifically talking about it in like India. Um, and he's like, you know, I don't think actually the people of India want us there. I think they like their own culture and everyone is like, ah, you're just crazy. We, the Brits are the best. Um, and then, yeah, he's exiled. So I think it's really interesting that at first we see him as a really kind of aimless character. And then in a flashback, we're seeing him display these um, feelings and thoughts that are very much not what he was taught growing up. And it would suggest that he's a person that has kind of a, sh a strong um, moral compass, maybe strong ideas about who he is. But when he's kind of released to the world, because he's been brought up in a life that's so privileged, he's just like living off allowance. He doesn't know what to, what to do. He doesn't really like the idea of working. Like, I think that that's really, it's really interesting and he's also not even seeking out really an education that would help kind of give him some sort of way to make an, a solid argument against colonialism. 
don't know, very interesting so far. And I'm really, I think it's really interesting the way that um, Emily St. John Mandel has kind of laid this out so far. So I'm intrigued by that. Um, yeah, it's late and I am going to just start reading this for the night. I really just want to finish it tonight. Like I have a little bit over 150 pages left of this. Hey, look, it's standing, <laughs> standing by itself. Um, so I probably won't finish it tonight, or at least I shouldn't. I am, in fact, exhausted. But this book just makes me want to keep reading, even when I feel like I absolutely must sleep. Good night. Gonna go read. Hi. I am sitting on the floor. Um, but I just, I like it down here. Um, it's the next day. I'm looking a little rough. I'm feeling a little bit rough. I don't know. With the last couple days, I've been so tired. It's crazy. Um, it's probably about two o'clock and I'm leaving for California tomorrow. So I have to pack, but I'm just going to do that later tonight. I'm going to go to do some work at the cafe because I need to start this essay, but I have a minor emergency, which is that my charger for my laptop has completely stopped working. It's been kind of fishy the last couple weeks, but I thought it would be fine. And today is apparently the day where it just stops. And um, I don't really know where to go to get a laptop charger, which is, I don't know. I, I can't, like, my laptop is literally on, like, 10%. I can't really work on my essay without it. So I'm going to go on a quest to find a charger. Um... If you're wondering if I read more of A Treacherous Curse last night, I actually did not. I watched YouTube for probably forever, and um, I did edit some of that video that I filmed yesterday, so that was good. I still want to finish it today. Um, we'll see. We'll see if I do. Wish me luck on my little my little quest. Um, I will be actually devastated if it doesn't work because I I hate just using my phone for things like I need my laptop. Hey, so I went on my quest to find a charger. I found one and then I realized the problem is my laptop. Um, so that sucks. It's at 2%. Um, the good news is I'm going to get either a new laptop or this one fixed when I go home. But um, the bad news is I can't work on my other essay and I'm flying home tomorrow, so I won't be able to work on it tomorrow. So now I just have three days to do my essay. And the other bad news, which is actually a bit more sad, is that I can't do any editing for YouTube um, without my laptop. So that just sucks. Like, the videos I want to put out are going to be delayed a few days, which doesn't really matter to you guys because you don't know about them yet. But it matters to me because I am excited about them. Um... It's now, I would say, probably 8.30. I don't really want to check. So I'm going to pack and I'm going to clean my room. And then hopefully read all of the rest of <laughs> A Treacherous Curse. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it kind of like sprint style. So I'm just going to pack for like 45 minutes. Um, pack and clean for 45 minutes. And then read for 45 minutes. And do that until I'm all done with the packing and the cleaning. I don't think it'll actually take that long, but who knows? Um, yeah, wish me luck. Okay, hi, it's like 20 minutes later maybe. I'm packing, not hard. It's never that hard. Like, I don't know why people deep it. Um, but I am at the point where I'm trying to figure out what books to pack and I have decided, and I'm really proud of myself because I have made it only four books and I'm really not gonna bring any more. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not doing it because I have my Kindle and I'm hopefully going to get some books for Christmas. So I have the first two I actually need for an essay I'm going to be writing in January, but I wanted to point it out because I read this book and absolutely loved it. Like either earlier this year or last year, Assembly by Natasha Brown. This book is so good. I think I must have read it twice now. It'll probably be three times by the time I do my essay but I was really excited because I had read it like a year ago and then it got assigned to me for this class I'm doing at uni 
Um, basically, it is about the life of a Black British woman who she's caught up in the machine. She works in finance, um, but she feels this overwhelming pressure to um, assimilate, to succeed. She's done everything she's supposed to do, but she's still not accepted by the people around her. So yeah, I'm gonna write an essay on that. Sorry, this angle is so weird. Let me see if I can get a new one. Okay, I kind of like this angle better. Um, ignore how messy that is. So yeah, that is the first book I'm bringing. And then I'm also bringing Race, Gender, and Educational Desire. So yeah, really excited to work on that essay actually, because I love Assembly so much, but you should read it. It's so short. And um, I fold down all the bottom pages when I like a quote and um, as you can tell, I love this book. So yeah, it's really, it's short, it's concise, it packs a punch and I think it was really, really well edit edited um, because it was so short. It's like, there's no, there's no extra fat that might need cutting off and it is really good. Going on to books that I'm actually gonna be reading for fun. The first one is the book I'm going to be reading on the plane starting tomorrow, and that is The Well of Ascension, which is Mistborn Book 2. There's this world that's kind of like ruled by, it's like a feudal society, basically. There's like lords, and they have like plantations and stuff. Um, and there are these people called the Ska, which are like, the downtrodden race and there are other people with powers um called i think mistings and what they do is they burn metals in their body it's called burning when you like use it up um and these metals like each one kind of does a different thing so for instance i think one of them like you can push on objects um and if it's an object like a door or something that's really like solid and in there, you can push push on it and then you'll be like moved away from it kind of thing. Um, but then there are people called Mistborn, which can use all of the metals. Most people can only do one. Um, and that's what our main character is. And there's obviously this like bad guy called the Lord Ruler. And in the first novel, our main character is kind of recruited to overturn this lord ruler and this is the second book i'm really excited about it i think so i gave the first book four stars um because i think part of it was i it took me a while to read it it was a long book and i was like dealing with stuff for school i'm really excited to have kind of a more uninterrupted time reading the second one so i can just kind of like dig my teeth into it um but I'm very excited about it. And then Tress of the Emerald Sea is, I think I've already talked about that in this vlog, but it's like the Princess Diaries, but gender swapped. And I love, I mean, not the Princess Diaries, uh, Princess Bride. And I love that film. It's one of my favorites ever. So Tress of the Emerald Sea. My sister's reading it, which is part of why I really want to read it Next up, we have The Picture of Dorian Gray, which I'm finally, finally going to read. Oh. oh, cute. I have this really battered Daunt Books bookmark <laughs> that I haven't seen in ages that I'm using, I guess, for this book. Um, it's a classic. It's about this guy that's, like, obsessed with himself and wants to say young forever. And there's this portrait that someone paints of him. Um that makes him stay young forever but the portrait kind of like depicts his old age but also kind of like the debauchery and sin that he sinks into from my understanding really excited really really wanting to read this and the writing i've read the first couple pages of this and it's like the most beautiful writing i've ever read last but not least 13 ways of looking at a fat girl by mona awad i'm going to be doing a video i've probably talked about it to you before um, where I'm going to read all of her books from, in order from publication, in publication order. Um, this is her first one. It's almost like, from what I've heard, 13 short stories, because it's like 13 chapters, and I think it's all about this same girl, but it's just like different parts in her, her life. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to read it because I love Bunny 
so much. So yeah, those are the books I'm packing. While I'm packing, I have been listening to Sea of Tranquility. I think I'm about 30% of the way through this book and I'm liking it. Not really sure where it's gonna go. Um, there are three different characters we've been focusing on so far. The first one is Edwin, who I talked about. The second one is, I think her name is Marianne. She and her husband were friends with this other couple. And the guy in that couple had this business and Marianne's husband invested in that business. Then it turned out that the whole thing was like a period pyramid scheme and um, Marion's husband killed himself because he had lost all his money. The other guy got sent to jail and Marion is now trying to find this other woman um, who she used to know. Um, and then in the other timeline, this one is set, oh, so that one is set in 2020. This one's set in 2023, which is weird. I don't know when this book is published, but yeah, people are living on the moon. And it's about this writer going on a like press tour for her new novel on earth. Um, but you know, she grew up in these like lunar colonies and um, she's always being asked these really kind of sexist questions about, oh my God, how does it, I, your husband's so amazing that he's like taking care of your child, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and now we're in this like different part of the book that is a first person narrator, which we haven't gotten before. And I'm intrigued. It's very well written. Um, and I'm really liking it so far. So I'll update you guys later tonight, but I just wanted to show you what books I'm bringing to California. Actually, I did just check and it's 2203, not 2023. So that makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Okay, hi, um, really quick, my Uber's coming, but I am ready and I'm about to go to California. I'm really stressed. You know, when you like have a zipper and then it starts unzipping behind where you've just zipped it? Yeah, that's happening to my suitcase. So I'm really hoping everything's not gonna fall open. I also couldn't close my suitcase, but it's fine. I do, I have to go. I simply have to go. One eternity later. Hi, so it's the next day and I'm gonna be closing out this vlog finally. Um, it's probably really long. So thanks if you stayed to this point. Um, okay, yesterday, I probably could have read more while I was traveling, but honestly, I kept playing like stupid games on my phone. Um, which did help pass the time really quickly, but on my Kindle, I read um, up to 7% of Daughter of No Worlds, and I'm really interested in it so far, and I'm really excited to keep reading it, um, but I'm not going to give you guys, like, really an update on it because I'm so early on in this story, but I am really intrigued, and I'm going to keep reading it. I obviously finished a treacherous curse before I even got on the plane um five stars five stars like it's just so good um I'm I don't even know what else there is to say about it like it was so good the relationship between Veronica and Stoker is insane and it's just like very very slow slow burn but in the best way um and you'll just love all the characters. Read this series, please. And then lastly, I did start The Well of Ascension on the plane. I got 90 pages in and I am liking it so far. I think, I don't know. At first I was like 30 pages in and I was just not really in the mood to keep reading it. I don't know what it is about this world, but sometimes I'm like not completely in love with it um and I feel like I was feeling like really annoyed because I want to like Mistborn um and I do like Mistborn but I don't think I'm gonna love it the way that everyone else loves it I think for me it's probably gonna be more of like a three four star series um but then I kept reading and I'm starting to get in the groove of it a little bit more I'm still not like obsessed 
but I'm starting to see there's a lot of interesting new elements coming into play in the second book and I am excited to see where it goes. We'll see how this goes for me but I am really really wanting to like it. Although I hate the cover like look at look at this girl look at her hair. I don't I don't know. I like I like all of the like surrounding stuff but like what what is she doing there? Anyway this is The Well of Ascension. I'm gonna continue reading this. So let's see, for this vlog, I read, I think this entire book, The Woman and Me. Um, I'm halfway through Sea of Tranquility, but there's not really much to say about that at the minute, although I am liking it. And then like 90 pages of this, 7% of Daughter of No World. I've read a lot this week kind of proud of myself but thank you so much for watching i had a lot of fun filming this reading vlog um i might continue doing this relatively often i think it depends in terms of like when i get back to uni um but i am hopefully going to be posting so much more now that i'm home for the holidays if you liked this video please consider giving it a like um and subscribing to me i Again, we'll hopefully be posting on here more and I would love for you to stick around and see what I'm doing. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Oh, if you've watched this far into the video, comment, um, there's some sort of Egypt related emoji for Treacherous Curse. Um, I'm going to put one on the screen and comment that emoji if you haven't watched it up until this point in the video. Um, I really appreciate you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.